Hi everyone, welcome to the week 5 video for Axi 232. This week we talked about select and ultimate mortality, which is a way of modeling the effect that when someone buys an insurance policy, they're probably going to be much healthier than an average person of that same age, because they have to provide proof of their health at the time they buy their policy. So this effect is known as the selection effect, or sometimes the temporary selection effect, because it does tend to wear off after time. So we want a way to model that. And to do that, we introduce the notation of x in square brackets. And that indicates a life selected at age x. So they bought their policy at age x. They were healthier than the average x-year-old at that time. And they're going to experience lighter mortality, so lower mu values, and of course then higher probability of surviving intervals than an average person of that same age. And with that, we can take any survival or mortality probability and express not just their age, but their age and how long it's been since they bought their policy or since they were selected. So this notation right here, tp x in square brackets plus d, means someone who's age x plus d right now, but they were selected d years ago at age x. And we want them, in this case, to survive t more years. So all of the interpretations of those probabilities are exactly the same. It's just that we're getting two pieces of information about their age. We know their age right now, that'd be x plus d, and we know the age at which they were selected. But this is known as the temporary selection effect, as I mentioned, because it does tend to wear off after time. Maybe, let's say, 10 years after someone buys an insurance policy, their health might have deteriorated. The insurance company doesn't know. So the, we can say that the selection effect wears off after a certain period. And we call that time after which the selection effect doesn't matter anymore, capital D. That's called the select period. After that point, so if the duration since selection has been larger than or equal to d, then we now don't care about the age at which the person was selected. And their mortality experience and all of their probabilities are going to be exactly equal as any probabilities for someone who is just age x plus d. We remove the square brackets because we don't care how long, we don't care at the age at which they were selected, if we're beyond that select period. So the effect is worn off and the mortality improvement is lost because it's been so long that the insurance company has no assurance anymore that the person is healthier than average. So the mu x in square brackets plus d, we don't care about the square brackets anymore, we just care about the h, that would be mu x plus d. And same with the, the p's and q's and deferred q's. We just drop the square brackets if the duration since selection is bigger than or equal to capital D. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned here, all of the probabilities and forces of mortality now only depend on the attained age, not the age at selection and the duration since. In order to actually use this information, we display it in a life table similar to what we did before when we weren't worrying about select and ultimate, and we just have L x in square brackets plus t for all values of t and x. But again, since we have this select period, if we have the case where little t here is bigger than or equal to capital D, and we've left the select period and gone into the ultimate part of the table, then these l's will just be the same as the l's in a normal life table. They'd just be l x plus t, no square brackets at all. And there's a number, a couple of different formats of looking at those select and ultimate life tables. There are examples on the course website. But basically, nothing new is happening here. All of the probabilities can be calculated the exact same way as we learned before with a regular life table. All you have to remember is just keep the age at selection in square brackets, and then if you ever have the duration since selection being bigger than the select period of the table, so bigger than or equal to capital D, then you can just use the regular ultimate L's rather than the select L's. So all the procedures are exactly the same, you just have to keep in mind when the age of selection matters and when it doesn't. On Friday we had a review class for the midterm on Monday, so nothing new there. Good luck studying, and I'll see you on Monday.